Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Peter sent me a note about an op-ed piece in USA Today, and I will admit that I was kind of surprised by this as well. And it varies from state to state, and that's why, because Michigan does it a little differently than many other states. But it's the most deadly traffic policy you've never heard of that leaves you vulnerable. So this is an op-ed piece by Kara Heyman, and she says, Crosswalk laws often give legal protections only to pedestrians, and many states say that's people who are walking, you're on foot, meaning that if you're on a bicycle, you might not be protected. If you're in a wheelchair, you might not be protected. If you're on a scooter or another personal conveyance, like a Segway, you might not be protected. And you'd think that if you're in a crosswalk, crossing legally, and you happen to be, I don't know, on one of these other things, you should be just as protected as somebody walking on their feet. And it depends on what state you're in. Example, out of Arizona. Uh, Roxy, a longtime Iowa resident, was out for a bike ride with her husband in Tucson in March of 2022 when tragedy struck. The couple, both avid bikers with decades of cycling experience, were riding their tandem bicycle on a trail, then used a crosswalk to navigate an intersection, which they'd been through many times when they were hit by a pickup truck who failed to yield. Roxy's a retired nurse and nursing educator. She died as a result of the crash after spending an excruciating two months in the hospital. But the driver walked away with zero convictions despite the fatal crash. It happened because of the glaring gap in crosswalk laws in the U.S. The loophole is often unknown, uh, so little is being done to fix it. Crosswalk laws often give legal protections only to pedestrians, specifically people on foot. So cyclists aren't protected, nor are people in wheelchairs, scooters, or other personal conveyances, like we said. We are continually seeing advancements in vehicle safety and roadway infrastructure to improve safety for all road users, yet road traffic fatalities continue to increase. These fatalities are often among so-called vulnerable road users, including pedestrians and bicyclists. But it doesn't have to be this way. There's a simple and straightforward fix to the legal loophole. They can simply change the word pedestrian to person. So you say if there's a person in the crosswalk using it legally, you can't run them over. Doesn't seem like that'd be that complicated. So Kara Heyman, who wrote this, is an injury epidemiologist who studies crash prevention and outcomes, and she knows that this simple change to crosswalk laws could make a big difference. Uh, She studies crash prevention and outcomes. The vast majority of state crosswalk laws specifically and only use the pedestrian in their language. For example, in Iowa, which is the state where the victim came from, the law states that the driver of a vehicle shall yield the right of way, slowing down or stopping if need be, to so yield to a pedestrian crossing a roadway within any marked crosswalk or within any unmarked crosswalk at an intersection. And so now, to give an example, Oregon includes bicyclists among the group of people who are protected in a crosswalk. So... It's going to vary from state to state. Minnesota law also covers bicyclists, and Wisconsin law covers bicyclists as well as other conveyances like personal delivery devices, electric scooters, electric personal assistive mobile devices, and so on. Now, here's the thing. I went and looked this up in Michigan because I was pretty sure that Michigan was a little broader than that. And I found an interesting flyer put out by the state of Michigan. So the state of Michigan puts out this flyer. I think they hand them out at the DMV or the Secretary of State's office. And it talks about how you've got to be careful about people in crosswalks. And it actually says, a pedestrian is anyone on foot. Also considered pedestrians are people on skis, skates, rollerblades, in a wheelchair, riding a horse, or using a horse and buggy. So if you are riding a horse and buggy, You are, for all practical purposes under the traffic law, a pedestrian when it comes to how people need to yield to you if you are where you belong. So again, you can't be ice skating down the middle of I-75 and go, well, hey, I'm a a pedestrian. Yield to me. (laughs) They're talking about pedestrians who are protected within the crosswalk or or protected when they're where they need to be. For instance, on the side of the road or on a sidewalk or whatever. But I was a little curious about this. Because I've actually seen governments publish stuff, talking about state governments or local governments, that occasionally have issues with them. And I was a little concerned because I don't understand how a horse and buggy becomes a pedestrian. 
Because a person who's inside the buggy, presumably, is inside the buggy, being pulled by a horse. Many people say, that sounds like a vehicle to me. Not a motor vehicle, but it's a vehicle. It's on wheels. It has its own propulsion system, i.e. the horse. Is that really a pedestrian? So I went and looked it up. And, and now I'll admit, I kind of ran into a dead end. And uh, I probably could have spent 16 or 17 hours researching this, but I didn't have that kind of time. <laughs> but I looked up in the Michigan Motor Vehicle Code the definition of a pedestrian. It's at MCL 257.39, 257.39, which is the blue books behind me. Pedestrian means any person afoot. Pedestrian includes an individual with a mobility disability who is using a power-driven mobility device. But that doesn't mention ice skates, skis, or rollerblades, uh, or riding a horse. It certainly doesn't mention a horse and buggy. Now the question is, what does it mean to be a person afoot? A person afoot. A-F-O-O-T. Now I'm sure you know what afoot means generally speaking, but the question is, is that literally a person is using just their feet to travel. So I looked it up in a dictionary, and the dictionary says afoot means simply to be on foot. Well, obviously, if I'm walking with shoes on, I've got shoes between my feet and the ground, but I'm on foot, so I must be afoot, right? So if you were to put ice skates on your feet and you're moving yourself about that way, I guess the ice skates would be no different than the Shoes, right? Rollerblades, the same thing. And by the way, it says rollerblades. What about the old-style roller skates where there's a square instead of four in a row? The metal ones. <laughs> old ones. And then it says a personal mobility device. But it says power-driven. That wouldn't appear to include a wheelchair. So where do they get this from? So I actually went and looked, and I found that under the traffic control signals section of the Motor Vehicle Code, 257.612, it says specifically there that vehicles must yield to pedestrians and bicyclists lawfully within the intersection or the crosswalk at the time the signal is exhibited. And it goes on and on about which signal is facing you and so on. So there it talks about bicyclists and pedestrians and other vehicles. And so the question then is, is the horse and buggy in that setting another vehicle? It might be. Um, horse? See, I'm not sure where the horse comes from. And so you say, Steve, earlier you said, but with 16 hours of research, you might have been able to find something. I'm wondering if a case in Michigan has interpreted this to include a horse. It's possible. But I don't see how a horse could be a person afoot because I've ridden horses before. I've also ridden ponies. And even on a pony, though, my feet don't touch the ground. <laughs> so when I am on a pony, I am not afoot. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, so I'm a little curious about that, but the, according to the state of Michigan's own documents that they hand out as PR, they do say a pedestrian is anyone on foot. Also considered pedestrians are people on skis, skates, rollerblades, in a wheelchair, riding a horse, or using a horse and buggy. And you might go, skis? Who's skiing? Cross-country skiers. Uh, it's a very, very big deal up north in the wintertime in Michigan where they have groomed cross-country uh, ski trails. And so it's not uncommon that they'll have a ski trail that crosses a road. And so if there's a crosswalk there and there's a person on skis, the state of Michigan is saying, you better, you, you, you know, you better yield to them. Uh, but I couldn't find skis in the statute. So that could be me not doing the full 16 hours of research for this. But the woman's got a great point here. And that is that I believe that a person who's legally in the crosswalk, as long as they're not doing something stupid, okay? But if they're legally in the crosswalk and they're using it to cross the street, by whatever means, I think they should be just as protected as a pedestrian who's afoot. A foot. So she's saying all you got to do is change the word pedestrian into person and maybe add something about them being there legally and crossing the street. So a person can't, I don't know, pitch a tent in the middle of the crosswalk, climb into the tent and fall asleep, and then sue you when you run them over and ask that charges be filed against you because they were in a crosswalk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not, you weren't crossing, however, nor were you walking. So 
That's great, great op-ed piece in the USA Today. I agree with the woman 100%. Kara Heyman wrote that. Peter sent me thanks a lot. The most deadly traffic policy you've never heard of leaves you vulnerable because crosswalk laws often give legal protections only to pedestrians with the narrow definition of being people on foot. And they often leave out other people who are legally within the crosswalk. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Recently, I ate at a real nice family restaurant. Every table had an argument going.